leaving camp. I camped at the Cooper Brook Falls lean-to. Wow, it was beautiful. These cascading, huge waterfalls with incredible white noise, which was great for two reasons. One, it helps you sleep, and two, when you're in the shelter, which I was, even though it ended up not raining, uh, it helps block out uh, noise from other people's sleep pads when they roll over and stuff. Very peaceful night. Uh, I'm up and out way too early. I don't have, I have like four hours, well, three and a half hours to go about three and a half miles so I can take my sweet time. I have a food drop at Joe Mary Road from Shaw's Hiker Hostel. There are a bunch of us getting food. Um, how that works is when I was back at the hostel for my zero day, they gave you a five gallon bucket and you put in it your food that you want or anything that you want. I have an extra power bank that I'm picking up as well as my food. Too much food, so my pack's gonna be heavy again. Although right now it's nice and light. I did a fairly good job estimating food. My daily intake has greatly increased. I am always so hungry during the day. Uh, and the other treat is they asked me with my food drop if I wanted a beer or a soda. And I said, I would love a beer. So I'm gonna have a cold beer with my food resupply, which will be a nice little treat out here in the 100 mile wilderness. Uh, you may ask, it's a wilderness, how is there a road? There are dirt roads that uh, can be accessed not super easily. And uh, if you call for a shuttle or whatever from one of these roads, it's exorbitantly expensive because of the travel time and difficulty. And in fact, one of the roads is privately owned and you have to actually pay <laughs> to go on it. There have been a few hikers out here, section hikers that have hiked a couple days in the wilderness and said, this is not for me and called for a ride out. And I would love to know how much that cost. <laughs> anyway, I have 3.7 miles to food pickup. And then another three and a half to my targeted campsite, which is the Antlers campsite. I'm taking a short day today to treat myself. Beautiful weather, as you can see. I'm by a nice babbling brook right now I have to cross. And I'll see you further up the trail. Have a great day. Another item of note, this morning was the second time only in my entire hike that I have fired up my stove in the morning to have a hot breakfast beverage. My breakfast beverage the whole time, other than the first day, I did make coffee. And it's just, you know, on the normal day to day, it's just I want to get up and out, and make time so I don't bother. And I have a Carnation Instant Breakfast drink. And I just throw the coffee packet in there and drink the whole thing down. This morning, it was so beautiful. I sat by the falls. Uh, well, looking at the falls because I had extra time and I was up early and had a hot breakfast beverage, including two coffees <laughs> thrown into my breakfast drink and actually two breakfast drinks because I had extra, get a few extra calories there. And it was so enjoyable. I just sat and stared and listened to the falls and I'm very happy I did that. So here's a bridge. Um, that looks kind of sketchy, but put together. And I'm always fascinated at what caused them to put a bridge here over a brook that, you know, it's seemingly not super hazardous versus some of the ones we've had to cross. <laughs> um, actually, this one could be a little deep. I don't know. And it might depend on the volunteer base and the sections they cover. Um, this one is logs on logs on logs, on rocks. Regardless, I'm always appreciative of a bridge. So thank you volunteers putting the camera away for this one. I cannot believe how lucky I have gotten with this weather in Maine and the forecast for the next several days looks impeccable, including Mount Katahdin, which can be very finicky. Of course, anything can change the last minute. However, I am in shock that I am at the point of this hike where I am planning my Katahdin summit. And um, I, I know I've said this pretty much every time, but I 
I can't believe that I have made it this far. I mean, I believe it because here I am. Uh, how much has happened, like, you know, uh, flooding and those freaking wildfires and illnesses and every person out here, or every person everywhere, whether you're hiking or not, deals with things all the time. Uh, I lost my phone. Uh, and to have this weather that we have had, I mean, yesterday was supposed to be a washout. It literally sprinkled on and off, maybe over a span of three or four hours. Like it wasn't even that bad. We had a beautiful night at camp. The rest of the time is supposed to be nice weather. Katahdin forecast looks amazing for days. I really hit the weather lottery as Jedi told me and I can't believe it. Now I'm at the point where I have to plan my travel home. So excited to get home and see my husband and my dog and to put my feet up and just be home for a few days before I continue this adventure down south and hopefully see some other hiking friends that have flipped already or uh, whatnot. There's a few of them down there and I hope to, our, I do hope our paths cross. Oh, it's just amazing and overwhelming all at once. And also, there's a lot of hiking to be done, but the consensus is that the hiking I have left from here to Katahdin is relatively flat, although there's a ton of rocks and roots to deal with, but I'll take it because the climbs really have been wiping me out, even though they're gentler than I have had, uh, like New Hampshire and Southern Maine were super challenging for me. Uh, these, I'm going to call them baby climbs, although they are not uh, a couple days ago. Whew, they wiped me out, so I'm, I'm glad to have some nice hiking. Like right now, I feel like I'm home at my county park, <laughs> and it's quite enjoyable. Oh. Anyway, things you think about when you're out here alone for 10, 12 hours. Um, but today, it'll only be a few hours, and then I am going to be on a lake in my tent, by my tent, and hopefully go for a dip if the lake's not too cold. I'm about to take a lunch break and I have had a change in my plans. I already passed my intended campsite for the day. Antlers campsite. The road miles, or the trail miles were so easy. I got there so early and I'm like, you know what? I uh, would rather bank that time and get to Abel Bridge on Sunday early and be able to get my laundry done and shower and relax. And maybe even have a campfire or something at my tent site there. Um, and because they only uh, do let you do laundry till 4 p.m. And I was afraid with having, you know, like 15 miles or whatever to do, I'd get there late and everybody would be trying to do laundry and blah, blah, blah. I don't need to stress out. <laughs> anyway, passed up Antlers Campsite. I did go in and look at it. It's beautiful on Joe Mary Lake. Speaking of which, I am about to take a break on Joe Mary Lake at a sand beach that was on the map. And I'm going to filter some water and have a snack. I don't know, maybe even go for a swim. We'll see. Seems like a good compromise. And uh, then it'll be about five-ish miles to the lean-to for camp. And before that, there in two miles, there is a stream with a view, apparently, of Katahdin. And if there's going to be one, it'll be today because it is not a cloud in the sky. I can't believe this weather. What a lucky duck I am. There are these nice stairs coming up a bank to protect from erosion. And there was a bunch of stickers on them. So I left my mirror. Oh, and I almost fell. <laughs> AT class of 23. And I have six miles to camp. Oh, what an amazing day. Even though my food bag is a little heavy. But I'm going to be remedying that by continuing to eat. <laughs> it will be later. So the Far Out app has a random camera icon that says view. I click on it. It says, oh, there's a side trail. You can get a good view of Katahdin on a clear day. I come out like, oh, is that it way over in the distance? I don't know. I can't tell. And then I looked to my left. There she is. Look at this day, you guys. 
unbelievable. And I'm just on a random trail in the woods and I just happened to check the app. And in comparison, <laughs> that's what's next to her. Oh my god. I'm like, yeah, that definitely wasn't it. <laughs> it's like, boom! Oh, beautiful. I'll see you in a couple days. Hey y'all, I took way too long at the Katahdin Surprise uh, Viewpoint. Lost track of time. It's a beautiful day and I was just sitting there enjoying the view and the lake that I was on and realized, holy crap, it was five o'clock and I still had 3.7 miles to go to camp. Luckily the trail is super flat and easy, you know, some rocky and muddy sections. I, uh, there was a really cool sounding tent site, not an official shelter, that was a quarter mile off the trail. It was a couple miles back. I could have been there sooner, but I had some people I was meeting at this shelter. Um, not a huge deal, but I didn't have a way to communicate um, to them my change in plans and I'm conscious of, you know, they know I'm out here solo and yada yada. I didn't want to cause concern. But also, the main thing is, it was a quarter mile down this muddy trail to this really cool, it was a peninsula on the lake, actually the lake where I saw Katahdin. Uh, quarter mile down and it said it only fit a few tents and I was like with my luck I'd make my way down there somebody would already be there with you know their group have all the tent sites have taken up and then I'd have to go a quarter mile back up I'd lose all that time to get to the campsite I really wanted to be at which is by a stream and it should be really pretty once I get there and yeah it's a little bit late but hey I have a headlamp I had a great day. I took a really long break at the beach. I sat with Katahdin. What more could I want, right? And um, it's not even going to be 7 o'clock by the time I get to camp, so I'll be able to get a good amount of stuff done before dusk and uh, still get to bed at a decent time. It's all good. I made it down that beautiful path to the lean-to. <laughs>